So the first thing you want to do is just sand down every little place where the paint is going to go to make sure the paint is going to stick. Uh, 600 grit is good. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get some 600 grit. You buy anything after you clicking on that link, I get a really small commission. So I like to use 600 if I'm covering up the whole thing with a color. But say I did a design where I did like splatter like on this one right here and the black is just the plastic so if you're gonna do that and not cover up all the plastic I would use 800 grip but this one I'm gonna cover it all up I'm gonna do blue so I'm gonna use the 600 and when you're sanding I like to wet sand it because when you're using a fine grit like a 600 um, <clears throat> The sandpaper tends to get clogged up with the dust when you're sanding it and the water fixes that. So you just want to use some soapy water, spray it on the sandpaper and the thing that you're sanding. And then you just want to go ahead and sand down the whole thing. A little trick you can do to get in those little spots. So now if you don't want to paint over the logo, or the DPI lights, whatever lights are on your mouse, this is how you cover it up so paint doesn't get on it. I'm just going to take a piece of like good masking tape. This tape right here is really good. You just want to press it on there really good. <clears throat> and then yeah you could do this with the mouse on and just use the lights from the mouse but then you're not going to be able to sand those areas very well and I like to just sand everything really well to make sure that the paint is going to stick everywhere so all you really got to do is just take your cell phone and then put it over the cell phone so the light shines through and then you just want to cut around so the you can peel the stuff off that's where the paint's gonna go. The best kind of knife to do this with is a little X-Acto knife. Just make sure the blade on it is super sharp. You wanna use a fresh blade where the tip is uh, not broken or anything at all too because basically you're gonna be cutting this with just the tip. So the next thing you want to do before you paint it, uh, you just want to clean everything off. You can use soapy water and I like to put gloves on because <clears throat> you don't want, really want to get grease on it from your hands. Just want to soak everything you're about to paint. Uh, I like to let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute and then wipe it off. Careful around the tape. You don't want to pull the tape off or get a bunch of lint stuck to it. I have a microfiber cloth like this. These are really good. If not, you could use like a, really anything that's like you just want it to be really clean will work. If it leaves lint behind, you just need to make sure to get the lint off first. And since these little spots here are hard to reach, um, 
putting that little piece of paper towel over the screwdriver getting in there. I don't want a bunch of sanding dust to be left behind in there. And then it's really important before you go to paint it, you want to make sure that all the moisture is off of it. You don't want any moisture on the inside of it either. Sometimes you can go to spray it and then the wind from the compressed air can actually make the moisture come out on the top of it and kind of ruin the paint. So if you have compressed air or you can use like a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Next, you just want to tape over everything where you don't want to get paint. Like I like to tape on the underside of these buttons uh, where the thing sticks out that hits the uh, the switch. And then I have this taped up like this. Another thing people do is they'll kind of have like a stick and with like a little alligator clip on the end that they can hold it with and just hold it with one hand and paint it with the other. That works really nice too. Like I can uh, hold this thing. I have it taped on and I can turn it around. It makes it a lot easier to paint. So now everything is ready to paint. Uh, I would recommend this brand of paint for the color. It's from Home Depot. You can get it at Walmart too. It's this Rust-Oleum, the 2X Ultra Cover. And it's paint plus primer, so you don't really have to use a primer first. And it bonds to, it's meant for plastic. It bonds for, uh, it bonds on plastic and covers plastic really well too. So I would definitely recommend this. They have a lot of different colors. And first thing you want to do is just shake it up for about a minute. Shake it up really well. And then right before you paint it, uh, I just like to blow it off again with air real quick. Just to get any dust off it. If you don't have compressed air, you know, you could just wipe it off with like the microfiber really quick. Or um, another thing you can use actually, it's called a tack cloth, which is really good. They only cost about a dollar. They're meant for automotive use, but it's basically a sticky cloth. You just rub it over it first, it'll get the dust off. That's a great thing to use if you don't have compressed air, like just right before you paint it. And then I like to hit up, get the edges first. It's better to do multiple light coats than like really thick coats too. To put something over it when it's drying to keep dust out of it. Yeah, you just wait like five, about five minutes for this base coat before you put on another coat. Probably you just want to wait till the gloss goes away, it starts to look dry, and then you can add another coat. It's good to best to read the label on the back of the can. It'll tell you how long to wait in between coats. And then next, I just like to look over it after the first coat, see if there's any kind of spots I missed that need more paint. So I want to put some black spatter over it. The easiest way to do it is get something to spray it in. You can use a spray paint cap too. Uh, I'm going to use this big brush right here, but you can use a toothbrush as well. And you just spray some of the paint onto something. <clears throat> you just dip the brush into it. And I waited about 15 minutes, just a little bit longer before I did gonna put the spatter on especially since I want to put the the buttons on it to see how to look all together so I had to touch them so I made a actually a huge mistake I went and painted the clear coat but I forgot to take the tape off for the lighting first and obviously you want to take the tape off before you paint the clear coat on <clears throat> 
But anyway, if you mess up like that, I just sanded everything down with a thousand grit after it dried. And you now it's ready to paint again. But I also decided I want to put some, uh, a little bit of like silver kind of speckles on it too. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And I want these ones to be smaller, so I'm going to use a toothbrush this time. Okay, so this time I'm going to remember to take this off first. Now another thing you might want to do, because the paint kind of gets like a lip here, a texture. I have to just take some thousand grit and just sand it down like really, really lightly. You got to be very gentle though. If you don't mess anything up too, you can just spray some paint on something. Take a little paintbrush or like a like the end of a paper clip or something. You can kind of like scrape some of the paint off the clear, dip the paper clip in some acetone. And you can like go back in with a little brush. Kind of wipe the dust off with some soapy water. All right, so I would recommend this stuff. I'll leave a link where you can get it in the description. Also recommend wearing a respirator. Stuff's pretty nasty. And you kind of want the edge of these raised up so you can kind of paint the edges of them. I like to put on like two thin coats first and then do a, thin, a third coat really thick. I like to do the edges first. Pretty much got the tops of them already when I was doing the edges, so. I have to get this little underside first, it's hard to reach. Now with the clear coat, I have to cover it up with something immediately to keep dust from getting in it. I actually put another thin coat on, so I have four coats total. Now on the instructions for this paint, it says you can do four or five coats total. But for the last coat, you just want to put it on really thick, and then this paint says to wait 10 or 15 minutes in between coats. That's what I've been doing, setting a timer for 10 or 15 minutes. And then you want to just put the last coat on as thick as possible without getting drips. So you just want to hold it closer and move the can slower. And you want to like overlap each pass that you do with the paint. The more you can get it on, the more glossy it'll look when you're done with it. 